enough talking again, let's get our hands dirty and create a database. So designing the stateful set, you need to identify um, or build container images. Um, we've done that uh, briefly in containerization um, in the first part of our, of our lecture. Um, we don't have to do this for Postgres. There's already a Postgres uh, Docker image, which we can use for our purposes. It's um, uh, configurable uh, and flexible enough um, so that we can use it. We'll skip that step here. We need to specify a headless service. Um, we'll go into greater detail what this means. We need to specify the actual stateful set description. And we need to provision the service and the stateful set, obviously. And then we'll conduct some simple ex examples with it. The container image we've taken from Docker Hub. So there's a description of the container image here on Docker Hub. Um, as you can see, it is um, a official image. Uh, there's, um, it's pretty much up to date and there's plenty of configuration. So if, if you were to describe a stateful set for Postgres, first get the basics of, state of Postgres. Watch a video, what is Postgres, how does it work? Watch a video how to set it up on Linux so that you'll have an understanding on what are the steps that need to be done in a container image. Then read the readme of the container image to see how the configuration options can be uh, configured. And finally, go back to the stateful set and describe the stateful set, which would be the procedure I recommend if you need to create a stateful set on your own. Um, so we are creating a very secret uh, password here. That's the one that's in the tutorial. Uh, it's passwords are stored as secrets in Kubernetes, as we've learned in a prior lesson. So let's clear the screen. Uh, kubectl create secrets is a generic secret because what we store is a password. Uh, Postgres secrets um, we created from a literal uh, is uh, going to be Postgres password uppercase and the password is going to be this. All right, this is a no brainer, but we can describe and see whether it has worked. Yes, as a password it has eight bytes. Two, four, six, eight. Yes, that makes sense. So let's create a headless service. Uh, kind service. Uh, Postgres service, Postgres A, there is the port, uh, 5432 is the, def, uh, the default port of Postgres. And this cluster IP non uh, marks the service as a headless service, which means that the service will not receive its own IP address. So usually a service has, IP ad has its own IP address. Pods have their own IP addresses. So uh, per default, a pod, um, uh, per default, a service creates a layer four load balancer so that incoming requests will uh, be issued against the IP address of the service, which will then be routed to the individual pods. With the headless service, this is turned off. You don't have a layer four proxy in front, but instead you use the Kubernetes DNS system to create aliases which means that um, the service's name will DNS resolve to the IP address of the backend pods of the service. We'll go into the detail of that. All right, so, oops. Let's apply the service. So we can see there's a service. It has the cluster IP none and the TCP port. I can describe the service. And 
And as I said, there is no IP address, which shows that the service is headless. Headless means there's no layer for load balancing, there's no reverse proxy. Uh, so in contrast to a proxy where you have one client that you know talks to several endpoints, a reverse proxy is the other way around. We have one entry points and several servers behind it. So usually you have a reverse proxy, a layer four reverse proxy. In this case, we don't have that. Um, so instead a DNS entry will be created. But as I said, we are going to look into that in the next chapter in greater detail. So let's uh, create a simple stateful set. Yeah, sometimes it's not that easy to cut and paste. All right, let's look at this beast. It's a stateful set, it has a name, it has a selector, which is important because this selector needs to match the selector of the service. This is how the service determines which endpoints to create. So basically, which DNS entries to add because we don't have an IP address, we don't have a load balancer, we want to have DNS entries. The service will take care of that, but in order to match the stateful set with the service, again, this is the same thing for regular services. You need to use the selector that will match the match label here. Or here to be precise. Yeah, I think so. All right, replicas is one, which means that we all, all only create one pod. Uh, termination grace period is 10. There are containers in there. Um, one container, the Postgres database. We are using the Postgres 12.2 image. Uh, it's an official Docker image uh, on Docker Hub, so we don't have to specify a user. And in order to create, or in order to bootstrap the database, we need to provide it with a password. We've created a, sec a secret to do that. Uh, we are going to mount the secret um, by referring to the secret. That's the name of the secret, that's the name of the key of the secret, which um, in this case is equal to the environment variable we want to mount. It's just for me to know, all right, it's going to be a variable, environment variable, because it's uppercase. Uh, and to not make any stupid mistakes, I took the same name, but they could be, have different names, obviously. We specify the container port, and there's going to be a volume mount, which would be our persistent volume claim. The name of the persistent volume claim is data, and uh, we mount it to varlib postgres data. The volume claim template is uh, specifying the name, uh, and it's pretty much the it's pretty much the persistent volume claim structure that we have had in the persistent volume claim example. And it's called a persistent volume name template because if you have multiple replicas, it will create multiple persistent volume claims for you. So as the persistent volume claim is the identity to get to a persistent volume, three pods, three persistent volume claims, three persistent volumes. Because they are strong identities, well, they will be one-to-one -one mapped to each other. And in the persistent volume description, and uh, the stateful set description, you don't tell here, how many you want, this is what you do here. And that's why there's a lot of templating going on. So don't be afraid of the word template here. It's basically a persistent volume claim and it's called template because you create multiple of them and you leave the stateful set controller to do the naming things. It's not complicated, but needs to be done and it's done for you. First time I looked into this and I was like, ah, oh, Persistent volume, ah, persistent volume, claim persistent volume, claim template, storage class, storage provisioner. Oh, there are five, six, seven entities we have to wrap our head around. In fact, it's rather simple. 
and um, it's not maybe as simple as two entities you have to get wrap your head around but it's 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 simple enough to make this abstraction work in a vast amount of Kubernetes environments so it has its value so let's create that stateful set um, cube cuttle apply F Stateful set. All right, and let's observe the fellow. Let's get the stateful sets. And we can see we have a stateful set here and it's not ready. Let's describe the fellow. Oh, it's creating something successfully. So namespace replicas, one is desired, one in total. So in the meanwhile, oh, we have one waiting pod. So seems to be all right. We're using the Postgres image, the port. Here's a environment variable set. It also refers, well, it's set to the Postgres password value in the key value pair of the secret Postgres secrets. So, but it's not starting. We want to know why. So we query the pods and we see an error. Damn you. What's going on? Cuddle logs, postgres stateful set. And you can see you'll get a pod that's numbered. The numbering starts with zero. Um, you can also see that cube cuddle get persistent volume claims. That there's a corresponding persistent volume claim and that's bound. So it basically does what we uh, expect it to do. But what it didn't do is didn't start the pod. There's a loop a crash loop back, which means that we'll need to get the locks of this fellow So the files belonging to this database will be owned by the user Postgres. The user must also own the server process. The database cluster will be initialized, blah, 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 error in a DB. Directory valid Postgres data exists, but it's not empty. It contains a lost and found directory, which is created by the creation of the X4 file system. So it's not empty and um, Postgres is complaining about that. So. Perhaps due to its being a mount point. <laughs> yeah, could be the case. Yeah, maybe it's maybe that's the reason. Using a mount point directly as the data directory is not recommended. Create a subdirectory under the mount point. I mean that's foolproof. So if you ever create software and you make it behave strangely, like expecting no other files in a directory, well, add a verbose error message like that because then even stupid CEOs like me can find the problem. Good, we got the logs, we know what the problem is, so it's time to fix it. So we changed the mount point to PG data. Uh, we're not changing the mount point, we are changing the PG data environment variable. So you can see there's a new environment variable. Here are the environment variables. So here we're going to add a new one. The name of the environment variable is called PG data. And why you, if you ask yourself, how the hell did I come to that point is, yeah, because it's in the documentation like several times. So here it'll show you what it's for. I think it also mentions this mount point thing. So um, if you read this, you will not run into that problem, which of course I did when I created the tutorial. So all right. Um,
Did I store it? Yes. Yeah, YAML. It's white space sensitive. It's the root of all evil in the world. Most of the time it's pretty pretty nice, especially if you have a uh, an editor with uh, with this little visual aid for stupid people like me, but still sometimes it bites you in the uh, yeah. Right. Good. Let's see. It's in a cr loop, in a crash. Doesn't seem to recover from this. So let's kick the stateful set. Recreate it. And then observe it. Container creating. Let's see how whether it works. Alright, the container is running. Let's describe the stateful set. Well, nothing created pod. The post operation against the pod could not be completed at this time, please. Try again. Failed create. Well, it seems to work. It seems to be all right. And the status here is ready. 